Greg Caggiano here from Ghosts on the Coast shooting another vlog. I think this is vlog number three here at the Strauss Mansion. It's a beautiful Saturday morning, um, the last day of September. I'm wearing flannel and drinking a pumpkin spice coffee from Wawa. It doesn't get any more fall than that, especially in New Jersey with Wawa. Um, so where to begin? It's kind of breezy out here, so if you hear whistling in the camera. Uh, just an update. We wanted to try to do these vlogs almost every week and then things get busy, things happen during the summer that prevented that from happening. But now that it's fall and we'll be shooting a lot of episodes, hopefully, and, and doing a lot of events here, we're going to try to get these vlogs coming um, on a regular basis. So last week, or maybe two weeks ago now, we posted vlog number two, which Patrick and I hosted up in the library. and. If you look closely after the 750 mark, it's about 750, 754 mark, you can actually see a shadow moving across the room. Um, I didn't notice it when I posted it and watched it. I watched it probably twice before I posted it. Didn't notice it. Um, and in the matter of a couple of days, we got an email, two messages. Somebody left a comment on YouTube saying they see this shadow um, moving. Now, it goes across the whole room. You can see it more clearly when it's behind Patrick. If you just write about, I think it's about 7.54 mark, right behind him, you see the shadow kind of move. Now, is it a shadow figure that we get here a lot? Is it some kind of paranormal activity? Uh, I really don't know. There's nothing, there, there's no audio with it. It's just a shadow. It's not like anything happened. Um, we were oblivious to it, and we just kept right on talking, so we did not see anything coming from the front of us, but of course this happened behind us. Um, the only human explanation I have is that maybe a car driving by on the street, the reflection off the car through the curtains caused something to move across the room, you know, caused like the, the shadow of the reflection across. Um, that's possible. It's, ha it's happened before, um, not in that room or that area of the house. Um, the only thing is, if you listen closely, you can't hear a car. Now, we film that with the windows open because we like to try to air out the house when it's nice out. And you can't hear a car drive by. And, I mean, it's right on the street. I mean, that, the room, you know, that side of the house is right, right by the street. And a lot of times when we're investigating, you know, we'll be sitting nice and quiet and relaxed, and the car will gun it on by and kind of, you know, surprise us all. So I don't think it was a car. That's the only explanation I have. Paranormal, not paranormal, I, I don't know. I can't say it's evidence. I just leave it uh, to you as something that's interesting and something that's worth checking out. So there's that. Uh, this coming Friday, October 6th, we will be kicking off our Halloween schedule. I talked mostly about it in the last episode, but wanted to bring it up here as well. Um, we'll be showing Nosferatu twice, 8 p.m. and midnight on Friday, October 6th. Uh, it's going to be fantastic Cody McCory and he has four guys coming with him four of his musicians he's in a bunch of different bands he's an amazing musician last last year he had a theremin that's the instrument I was trying to remember in the last vlog that thing it kind of like an L shaped and it, it shoots out electric currents and you, you move your hands through it and, and it, um, it plays the, the sound based on your hand movements and uh, he let us play around with it when the concert was over that was that was really cool it's not every day you get to see a, a theremin so I don't know if he's bringing that this year but um, let me tell you about this guy. He just, last year we booked him to shoot, uh, to, uh, to score Nosferatu, um, and he said he only watched it once, he threw something together. He just threw a 90 minute score together, and it was fantastic. Now this year he says he has a new score, because he's watched it more, and more closely and he has something better prepared than last year, which is hard to believe, because last year was amazing. I mean, we sold out, we had so many people there, people were just uh, fascinated by the instruments he had and the sound he was able to to produce and you know a silent movie you think music with a silent movie I mean it's not a big deal you just play music but no there are some dramatic points in the movie where you want to match up especially the the finale of the movie I mean, and that's actually on on our Facebook page I believe AHS Lantern Tour facebook.com slash AHHS Lantern Tour I believe the video is still up from last year so that's this Friday, October 6th. Please come. It's $15 a person. All the proceeds benefit the society. Um, you know, we pay the band, of course, uh, from that. But, I mean, they're, they're just great. They come and um, they just want to help out. And so we could use your help by coming to this wonderful event. There's two showings, 8 p.m. And if you really want to have fun, kick off your Halloween season in a spooky way, a midnight showing, 
uh, one of the first horror movies ever made. It doesn't get much better than that. The next day, uh, Saturday, October 7th, we are participating in the town-wide yard sale, totally unrelated to Halloween. We have some items left over from the flea market and some new things as well. People donate stuff constantly. I, I actually have some stuff I'll be bringing. You will not be buying any haunted items, I don't think. I don't think any ghosts are going to be attached to, uh, to the items, but you never know. Now, that's a joke. I don't want anybody to think they're going to be buying those. But really, come out and support us. All that money benefits us. I, I hate to keep saying, you know, money, money, everything benefits us. But uh, it, it's a museum, and, you know, we don't have income, really, other than donations, memberships, and events and ticket sales. And if you love Ghosts on the Coast, you'll notice most of our episodes are filmed here. I'm on the board. I think half of our, uh, half of our team are board members or volunteers. Um, and we shoot a lot of episodes here because we're, we're honored and thrilled to have a haunted mansion museum at our disposal uh, anytime we want. And if you, if you like those episodes, I mean, please consider helping out the museum. The money ain't going to us. It's going here um, to this building that was built in 1893. And, you know, you can see behind me the shingles and everything. It can use a little bit of work. It's not going to fall apart, but it, it could use some work. So this Halloween season, we're hoping to bring in a lot of money um, to help the renovation, the restoration work here, and also scare scare the hell out of you. That would be that would be nice as well. Um, and again, not to rehash uh, the last episode, October thirteenth, Friday, October thirteenth. We'll be showing Friday the thirteenth. That's ten dollars a person, eight p.m. showing. Uh, Friday, October twentieth, we're doing uh, Don't Go in the House. That was the movie filmed right here. And actually, there is a scene where somebody comes running out this door in the movie. Uh, they're on fire. We'll tell you how they got put on fire, but they're on fire and they come running out this door, down the stairs and everything. It's really cool. Movie is not great. We've talked about it on the show a lot. The movie is not great, but to watch a horror movie filmed in the place it was filmed, and that movie was filmed here. It wasn't like this is just a couple of scenes in the movie. I mean, this house is, is basically a character in the movie. Um, and there's some nice, uh, there's a shot of the Oceanic Bridge in Rumson. There's a, a couple of scenes filmed down on Sandy Hook. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Give you a little jolt. Uh, 8 p.m. midnight, Friday, October 20th. Saturday, October 21st is our Halloween party. We'll have psychics and tarot card readers. It's a potluck, so please bring a dish or drink to share. You can walk around the house and ghost hunt with us. Partying in a haunted mansion, fantastic. And the weekend after that, that's our ghost tours. And we actually have some footage from last year's on YouTube. And they were just, uh, they, they went very well. We, we didn't know what we were going to get. Figuring, bringing 30 people around the house, telling stories, turning on the spirit box every once in a while. We, we were not sure if we were going to get anything at all. And sure enough, uh, people had uh, quite a little bit of paranormal activity. And we're very happy. I was very happy. Uh, there was even one, one tour where we were standing uh, on the stairs going up to the third floor telling a story. And there was this loud bang. It was so loud, the, you know, the... the the room shook and everybody kind of gasped and Lou was sitting up on the steps telling the story. I was standing below. They're looking at us as if, you know, they were expecting us to have maybe like a baseball bat banging the wall trying to scare everybody, but we're not. And actually two people went into the room. They ran immediately into the room next door, our tool room, our historic homes room, where we have all the tools that they used to build houses with back in the 1800s. And they thought we had somebody hiding in the closet, banging on the wall, trying to scare people. And sure enough, they go in there and there's nobody there. That's a first. A bang that loud, I think maybe that was the first time. And then a couple weeks later, it happened again, not on the tour. It was just when a few of us were hanging out. So you go on a tour, there's no guarantee of paranormal activity. It's a 45-minute walkthrough with ghost stories, and we stopped to do a little investigating. There's no guarantees, but you never know. Last year was, was very surprising, the amount of activity. So that's about it for now. Vlog number three, we're going to be, like I said, trying to post these every week or two. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Strauss Mansion behind me, I don't know if you can see on the door back there, there's two bullet holes in that door up, up, up in the window. Must have been very small shells. Um, they've been there forever, nobody knows how they got there. And if you look closely in the movie Don't Go in the House, which was filmed in 79, those holes are there too. So I don't know what was going on with that. People always ask, how come there's bullet holes in that window there? And just, just one of those mysteries here at the Strauss Mansion. Anyway, thanks for watching. Ghosts on the Coast, vlog number three. Greg Caggiano, we'll see you next time.